Thank you for joining this webcast. The plan for today is to go through a few quick slides and then get straight into seeing how Canary works. Canary was built for this simple problem. Most organizations don't know when they've been breached, often for hundreds of days. It doesn't matter if it's Target, RSA, or even the NSA. Most orgs, despite spending millions and millions on internet security, have no idea when they have been compromised. By external hackers or malicious insiders, your network has so many entry points that it is impossible to prevent all attacks. But once attackers have managed to breach your network, most attacker movement looks very similar. You have lateral movement, locating resources, finding other hosts and networks, and this becomes something we can hone in on and detect. Canaries, sprinkled around your network, looking like Linux hosts, Windows hosts, routers, or even SCADA equipment, become perfect high-fidelity warnings to let you know that badness is happening on your network. One alert when it matters. Of course, if your problem is managing a thousand or 20,000 nodes, it doesn't make sense to ask you to manage a few more fake nodes. So, Canary is built very specifically to make sure that it adds no admin overhead or maintenance costs. We spent an incredible amount of engineering time making sure we can keep this promise. Four minutes after unboxing your Canary, it will be up, running, and useful on your network. Take a look at how Canary works. The solution is split into two parts, the Canary sensor and the hosted console that manages it. Every customer gets their own console hosted in AWS. Let's log in. You should notice a single canary in my console. This isn't surprising since there is a single canary on my desktop. We'll come back to that. Let's check out settings. Settings are pretty straightforward. Change your password. Enable two-factor authentication and configure who receives your notifications. By default, this is email or SMS notification. We also support webhooks, which means that we will happily pump JSON data to your hook every time an event fires. If you are running Slack or HipChat, we will send events straight into a channel of your choice. Webhooks and the use of the API means that Canary will happily play with most scenes and log collectors out there. We also support whitelisting. So if you have a Nessus server or Qualys server that will be reaching out and touching your birds, we can stop it from driving you insane. And that's really about it for settings. You come in on day one and do the setup and then completely forget about it. Let's get back to the main screen. Let's click on this Cisco and grab the IP address. Now let's bring up Nmap and see what this canary looks like on the network. Port scan detection is turned off by default, but we've turned it on for this demo. You will notice that the scan barely finishes and the first alerts have already come through. A quick look at the alerts, and we can tell that we have been port scanned, but more specifically, we can tell we have been Nmap OS scanned. This is interesting because if people start trying to fingerprint canaries, then we can fingerprint them fingerprinting us. If you've got someone on your network fingerprinting devices, you probably want to know about it. Let's go back to that Nmap scan. The result should look like the scan of a typical Cisco device. You see Cisco-ish services, a Cisco MAC address, and even Nmap's TCP stack fingerprinting thinks that it's a Cisco IOS 15.1 device. On the network, for all intents and purposes, this is a Cisco device. Let's check out some of those services. Let's try Telnet. What you get is a typical Cisco banner. Let's try logging in with some default usernames and passwords. You should notice that even while we are making bad password attempts, the alert has already popped up on the console. I usually tell customers at this point, your canary has paid for itself. You know that you are being attacked, you know the source IP address, and you have the benefit of seeing the credentials that the attacker tried to use. If an attacker is using valid credentials, your compromise probably runs deeper. Depending on your configuration, these alerts will show up in your email, on your SIEM, or your mobile phone too. 
Let's try SSH. Once more, we see the alerts popping up in the background while we are trying combinations of usernames and passwords. Once more, Canary gives us the attacking IP address, the time, and the credentials used. It's worth taking a quick look at GraphView. GraphView allows you to easily tell if it's multiple actors attacking one canary or one attacker launching multiple attacks on your network. So we've seen that Canary can be a convincing Cisco device on your network, but this could have taken ages to set up. What happened to that four minute promise? Let's set up a Canary from scratch to test this out. I add the new Canary and give it power. You might notice that I have not given it Ethernet yet. I'll explain why in a little bit. When this Canary boots up, its LED turns blue. It means that this device is now in Bluetooth config mode. Canaries can be configured in two ways. We'll discuss the Bluetooth mode first. When the blue LED is on, your Canary becomes Bluetooth discoverable. We simply pair with the device and then connect to it. Once you are connected, we take our browser and surf to setup.canary.tools. At this point, we configure the Canary. We flash the status LED so that we know which bird we are working on. Enough tomfoolery. Let's configure this bird. We'll give it a name. I'm going to call it O2 NAS O2. For a location, I'll say it's sitting on our table. Now you can choose Canary's personality. We can go for Windows 2012, Windows 2000, XP, Windows 10, Linux servers, Linux proxies, routers, JBoss servers, even SCADA equipment. In this instance, we're going to go for Disk Station NAS. Once we choose that, Canary makes a whole bunch of presets for us. So, it selects a MAC address that belongs to Synology and an IP stack that makes sense. We're going to leave almost all of the settings as is, but because this is a NAS server, it's going to have a working share. Let's go ahead and change that share name from Documents to Secret. I'm also going to go ahead and create a folder in it called Salaries, and in that folder, I'll create a new PDF file called exec-bonuses.pdf. That's it. I'm going to leave everything else as default and click Save. At this point, your Canary saved its config to disk and generates a public and private key pair. We're not connected to Ethernet, but when we hit register, a little bit of network hackery tunnels that key between your two browser tabs. This allows the device to push its key to your console, so when we go to the console tab, we see that a new canary is waiting to be registered. Click confirm and note that it is waiting to check in. We go back and click finish and we're done. At this point, your canary reboots. We give it ethernet and we wait. It's worth mentioning that all communication between your canary and your console from now on happens encrypted over DNS. This means you don't have to make any holes in firewalls or exceptions in ACLs for your canaries to communicate. As long as they can talk to a valid DNS server, traffic will go out and your canary will turn green. And that's it. At this point, you've got a disk station, NAS, on your network too. Let's grab its IP address and see what it looks like on the network. An NMAP scan confirms what we were expecting. Looks like a Synology NAS. It's running Synology services. It's got a Synology MAC address, and it's running a Linux kernel that we expect for a Synology NAS. Let's check out some of those services. Let's try FTP. Once more, we see alerts being generated in the background, even while we're failing to log in. The port scan also suggests that the server was running HTTP. Let's try surfing to the IP address. Yep, a Synology NAS and once more a failed login should give the admins the alert that they need to let them know the badness is happening on their network. It's worth noticing that while the FTP alert gave us an IP, usernames and passwords the HTTP alert 
also gives the attacker's browser information. The info we get back from Canary depends on the service being attacked. Being a disk station NAS means that it also has a disk share. Let's try mapping to it. We pop a finder window and map a drive. Canaries can also be enrolled into Active Directory. In this instance, there is none, so we are going to connect to it as guest. And there we see our secret share with our salaries folder and inside it, our exec bonuses.pdf. Double clicking it simply brings up a password protected PDF with a random file size and a random timestamp. The most important thing though is our alerting where we've got access to all their information we need. If this canary was enrolled in Active Directory, we'd also have his AD username to go on. I said there were two ways to config canary. We've looked at Bluetooth. Now let's look at the other. Configure your canaries from inside your console by clicking on it and then clicking on configure. The remote configuration window lives right in your console and gives you access to all of the same config information. I'm going to rename the server 03 WinFS1 03. And let's make it a Windows server this time. Let's go in and choose Windows Server 2012. You'll notice Canary comes back and says, hey, the Synology MAC address doesn't make sense with this server, so I've made it HP instead. Let's take a look at some of the other settings. You can enable a web server. You can upload your own web route or choose from one of our predefined templates. If you wanted, you could even enable SSL on your web server. Simply tick the box and then upload your own SSL certificates. One of my favorites is the custom TCP service. You can rapidly model plain text TCP services. Choose a port. Choose a custom banner. Let's go for welcome to the Metasploit show. And then when someone connects on that and sends us data, let's send them back a response. Let's say 404 command unknown. You can add as many of these custom TCP services as you like. You will notice with services like SQL Server, we'll give you the choice for which version of the protocol we'll speak. Back to our file share. Let's make some cursory changes. This time we will call the share finances. We'll delete our previous salary share and let's go ahead and create a new one. This time we'll call it super secret stuff and we'll create a file in it called secretfile.docs. That's it. Let's deploy our new config. What you should see now is a little icon indicating that a new config is being pushed down. The next time that canary checks in, it sees that it's got a new config. It downloads it, applies it, and then reboots. When the server comes up again, it will come up with this new configuration, this time being a Windows file server on our network. At this point, it's pretty predictable, but let's look at what this box looks like on the network. As expected, Nmap looks at its TCP stack and it deduces that it's Windows 2012 server. How about that custom service we had running on port 4444? Ah, our Metasploit shell. Help! Guess not. And of course, faithfully, all our alerts have been generated. So we know our custom TCP service was hit. The person who hit it typed in help as his command. For the most part, this is Canary. Inexpensive, quick to deploy, and does what it says on the tin. But wait, there's more. Let me quickly show you one of our other services called Canary Tokens. If you hit www.canarytokens.org, you'll see our free Canary Tokens server. This service is used by thousands of people every week, and every week dozens of people find out they have been compromised through Canary Tokens being tripped. How it works is simple. First, you select your token. I'm going to go ahead and choose the plain old web bug. Then you enter your email address. 
This is just so we can notify you when your token is tripped. Then, it is important to give yourself a good reminder of where this token will be placed. I'm going to say it's a demo token in my inbox. The Canary Token server then gives you your Canary Token, which, ostensibly, you'd place in your inbox. Let's take a closer look at what it gives us. You can change this last bit to be anything. Make it top secret .pdf. An attacker who surfs to this, stumbles on this while reading your email, or Dropbox, or wherever it is placed, gets back nothing. But you get back an alert to alert you that your Canary token has been tripped. Besides just getting the attacker's IP address and knowing that something bad is happening, you can actually get more information on your attacker. We've run JavaScript in his browser so we can geolocate him. We can tell you the plugins that his browser supports, and using things like a local WebRTC leak, we can even tell you his real IP address. Let's take a look at one more token. Let's look at the DNS token. Once again, we enter an email address and a reminder. This time the token given to us is a DNS name. If anyone were to look up this DNS name, we'd get an alert telling us that badness has happened. Now a web bug or DNS lookup isn't really rocket science, but with these two primitives, we are able to build a whole bunch of interesting tokens. We can give you a Word doc that alerts you when it's opened, a PDF file that alerts you when it's read. We can even give you fake AWS keys that alert you the moment that they are used. All of this is available free on www.canarytokens.org. But as Canary customers, you get one better. You get all the benefits of Canary tokens right inside your console. Let's create a web bug. We'll call it demo for WebEx. We'll grab the created Canary token and trip it ourselves. Note that this time the alert comes through just like a regular Canary alert. Of course, the other benefit is that Canary customers get tokens that haven't been released yet, like the ability to token Google Docs and Google Sheets. The best part is the possibilities for integration. So, if we take our existing Windows Canary, its file share, let's configure it and make a slight change to the folder structure. This time, we'll tell it to make a tokened file called 2018-finances-docs. When it comes back to us, we've got a Windows file share with a document that doesn't just tell you it's been opened, but also tells you where it is when it's later copied. So now you don't just get told that Bob from accounting mapped your server and copied a file, you also find out that three days later, the file was opened in Belize. All this for just five minutes of setup. And that's the whole Canary pitch. Quick, inexpensive, easy, with amazingly low false positive rates. Why wouldn't you do it? Reminder, Canary sensors can be hardware-based, VMware-based. We've even got versions called Cloud Canary that runs as AWS instances in the cloud. Canaries are currently deployed on all seven continents, and our users genuinely love us. You can see some of their comments on canary.tools forward slash love. You can start small and easily grow your flock to meet your needs. Visit canary.tools forward slash quote to see how the pricing works or to drop us a note. Customers all over the world love Canary. I think you will too.